What a wonderful moment to be alive as we see, first of all, Brexit and then the Trump double whammy. And the left just don't know what's hit them. They don't even respond to giant crushing defeats. They're just totally delusional. Well, this, this of course, is, is very evident in the measures you see being proposed by the left to make sure that Trump doesn't actually become president. They've been nobbling the members of the Electoral College, trying to get them to change their votes away from what the Constitution would expect them to do. And that, I think, will fail. I think he has a large enough majority there that even though there'll be a few wobblers, he'll still carry the day very clearly. I think it's towards the end of December they do that. And that was their first thing. The next thing, as you were mentioning just a moment ago, they turn out on the streets and start throwing things and they start rioting because they can't accept the will of the people in a democratic system if the will of the people doesn't happen to agree with them. And look how remarkable it was. After all, all the advantages were with Hillary Clinton. Clearly, when you have WikiLeaks coming out, clearly when you see how truly nasty these hundreds of thousands of emails are, like, you'd have to work, even if you were a demon, to write this nasty and this hateful, but it shows it's really a college of scumbags that have bad will, and they're just manipulating people and it was Stephen Bannon's plan uh, to actually cut taxes on the poor people, regardless of what color they are, and deliver a program uh, where Trump's going to go into the black areas. He's going to do tax incentives. He's going to do the tax cuts and deliver and try to break the will and the future takeover of the Marxist Democratic Party. And I see it happening. I mean, I see total victory if Trump presses and does not back down. I think he absolutely must appoint an attorney general, which he's doing, that will prosecute the Clintons. It's not vindictiveness. It's not authoritarian, they say, if we want them prosecuted. They've committed massive crimes. They must be prosecuted. I think the, the first thing is, let's, let's start with Steve Bannon, whom you mentioned there. Uh, I met him when I was last in the States, um, uh, sort of six or nine months ago. I was very impressed with him and was very glad when he... I, I had had some warning this was going to happen, but he eventually ended up pretty much masterminding Trump's campaign and as a reward for having succeeded in that he's now his chief strategist now of course what you do have to worry about and this is something that ron reagan got wrong i was talking to the chairman of his council of economic advisors a few years ago and he said wasn't it a wonderful era i said yes except for one thing and he said what i said ron reagan reduced taxes but he didn't reduce the spending right. of the federal government as well and you have to do both. both you cannot do the one without the other or you will increase what is already a desperately serious problem both sides of the atlantic and we've got to be very clear about this and that's the trick if you're going to cut taxes, as we did under Margaret Thatcher, you must also cut the spending of the sure. federal government. And uh, this, is, this is where I slightly worry that Trump is saying we can do it all from the supply side. We can just um, allow lots of money into the economy and hope that uh, everything takes off and then uh, the greater tax revenues will, will bail us out. That has never worked. It never will work. You can buck many trends, as he has, but you can't buck that one. Sure, well, the word is he's, he's going to try to hold it the same. The great, what about holding the same? Don't have to follow. What about holding the same, then? Well, if he, if he held spending the same as it is now, America is just going to go under because uh, Obama has damn near tripled the national debt in the U.S., and it took 100 years to accumulate. I just want to get your view on the fact that yourself, Nigel Farage, who came and coached Trump the last few debates, Trump admitted really helped him, uh, you know, go after the nationalism, the anti-globalism, Americanism, not globalism, just... I mean, we should take stock of how big our victory has been. Globalism is in crisis. And, and then really understand, they want a consolidated economy where the tax-exempt corporations can thrive. It's a new form of feudalism, and then everybody else implodes. I mean, I think really we have to just get to the point of exposing the fact that this is a criminal consolidation conspiracy
Let me stop you just there, because what you've just mentioned, in fact, is fascism, where a few favoured corporations are allowed to get very rich and everybody else is paying through the nose for it. That is fascism, and that, of course, is one aspect of the current so-called Democrat Party. The other aspect, of course, is outright communism, and these two forms of leftism are different sides of the same coin. And the remarkable thing is that the, the electorate has, to an astonishing degree, rejected this, uh, these 20th century, outdated, failed, and murderous... And the rejection is accelerating. When you think that fascism and communism in the 20th century killed 250 million people between them, and that already we're now killing another 6 to 10 million every year by policies to make climate change go away when it's hardly happening anyway. And those policies are killing 6 to 10 million people a year by denying them the right to have electricity that we can take for, for granted. So the left are continuing their war on humanity. I think this is, this is very, very typical of the left now. They are not in any real sense Democrats. They don't believe in the popular vote unless by their power in the media they can manipulate it and, of course, by mass massive voter fraud, even that wasn't big enough to, to get it for them this time. Yeah, they stole that, five states, Trump still won. I hope they clean up. So Trump still won. And of course, they're furious. And what should we do about this? What we've got to do is to make it clear to them that they either shape up and sharpen up and get back with democracy and start understanding that the will of the people in a republic that is democratic is sovereign or they can get out of politics altogether and go and grow vegetable marrows. They can't pretend that they like democracy when they don't. And one of the reasons why they lost is that people are beginning to realize that the left hate democracy because every so often, as it has this time, it allows somebody else a turn at the levers of government. <laughs>